That does not mean that we have necessarily 53 schools. I'll come to that in just a few moments. Now to replace this present situation, the board in the last meeting, as we said a moment ago, <clears throat> has adopted this new plan, which... Ben, they're giving me one of those signals that says you should hurry up. Hurry up. Okay, we can do that. This, divide, this uh, diminishes or decreases the number of districts into 11. And what the board had in mind to do is to leave a high school in each district. So now then we have 11 districts. This is a, a plan that has been submitted to the people, and that's what we're going to have. We're going to have a people's program. At the present time in the old 53 district uh, school uh, system, we have 39 one-room schools, two two-room schools, and one consolidated elementary school with 132 pupils. I checked back in 1892, we had 131 one-room schools in Hardin County. So I think we've made an advance. You know, I, I wish the producer of this show would... Uh, and the other show, he starts off with a great big tall fellow, and this one he starts off with a big tall <laughs> fellow. <laughs> sort of puts me in a funny spot. Carl, I notice um, this editorial, you say the cart before the horse on school reorganization. Is that what you think Ben's doing, getting the cart before the horse? Well, I'll change my simile just a little bit. I think that uh, Ben has nothing but a, a horse and buggy program for our educational system in Hardin County with that plan he's just outlined there. Well, uh, you got something better? Is that it? <laughs> or what is it? Well, Ralph, let me explain, and to the rest of you people, I don't think that the plan that Ben has just outlined here does anything but perpetuate what we've had. For the last 25 years, it perpetuates all the inequities and inequalities that we've got in our school system in Hardin County. It doesn't improve a single solitary thing. In the last 25 years, we've modernized practically everything in Hardin County, from the kilowatts that Ben's helped bring us to the rubber tires on our tractors and all the rest. We've modernized in Hardin County. We're a rich county. We could give our kids, all of them, good, equal opportunity at about the same cost all the way. But we're not doing it. We've got 11 high schools in Hardin County, ranging in size from as small as 38 to 340. In that rich agricultural county with 11 high schools, we have five of them that have Smith Hughes vocational agriculture in an agricultural county. We have three that have Smith Hughes home economics. And only three or four of those high schools that have really good shops program that a boy could go in and learn how to weld a broken part or repair a tractor. Now those are just examples. And I'd like to further emphasize that point of inequity, inequality, by two schools, specific examples, Ackley and Whitten. Whitten, a small school down in the south part, Ackley, one of our largest schools in the north part. These bars on the top show that the Whitten program is largely a minimum uh, read and write and arithmetic program. You've got a high school diploma because you have passed the minimum requirements in these courses right here. Here on the bottom half are the Whitten extracurricular activities, Glee Club, Band, Basketball, Round. Let's take Ackley. Here is the richer program. Sure, the read and write and arithmetic. Also, vocational home economics, vocational agriculture, industrial arts, business training, driver's training, physical education. Here are their extracurricular activities. Now, what does all that cost? On a per pupil cost, and don't blow your top right now, Ben. Per pupil cost, $336. Actually, $256. Now, you say, Ben, that per pupil cost means nothing. Those dollars come out of somebody's pocket. They come out of our pocket, the taxpayer's pocket. Let's talk about millage for a minute. We have school districts in Hardin County where there is no millage levy whatsoever for school purposes. We have the High Martin over in the town that you're familiar with, Alden, 46 mills for school levy. Now, I have no pat answer to these inequities because I have no study. I don't have the study that the county board should have had and been making for the last three years before it came up with its map. I think the first thing we need is a really thoroughgoing study of our school situation, the courses offered, the millage levies, the taxable valuation in various combinations of districts. Now, I think that study might show, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight districts 
I'm sure I don't know. And I'm not advocating any particular number of districts. But if you'll just, everybody grab your seats for a minute. We're going we're gonna to start drawing a map here, just, just for illustration. You're going to draw a picture? I'm going to draw a picture. We're going to come up with six districts, which I don't necessarily advocate. But it'll give us something to chew on. We might take it this way and have Alden here, Iowa Falls, Ackley, Owasa, Steamboat Rock, Eldora in one district, Hubbard, Radcliffe in another, New Providence Union and Whitman. Now, before anybody jumps up and takes a pot shot at me, I'm not advocating closing any schools, any high schools. I would put them in those districts, in that grouping, or seven districts or eight districts, letting the people in that district, in one administrative unit with one school board, one administrative staff, decide how they could make best use of their total facilities for the total education of their children. Perhaps you'd have one senior high school with junior high schools in your other schools. Perhaps you'd run all of your, all of your schools as senior high schools, but concentrate and get a really good shops program and book egg program and one, a good home economics program, get business training, get a really good music program, get your driver training program, the extras that modern education demands. We've got schools in Hardin County where you can transport the whole high school education from one school to another in one or two school buses in 10 to 20 minutes. I believe... They're giving me those funny signs where you begin to... I am through. <laughs> Everybody happy? Let's have a lot of fun now. Uh, Rex, uh, you're sort of between the two here. Uh, what is it? A rose between two thorns or something like that? With, uh, you happy about all this? Well, I'll tell you, Ralph, I... Ben told me that he thought I was the ham of the bun. I don't know about that. <laughs> but I think you can begin to realize that there was a reason for me being in between these two war horses. I think this, that we really, folks, should uh, bear in mind that we're approaching this discussion here on the basis that we're dealing with the education of our youth. And that is the very foundation of our democracy. The education of our youngsters is the basis on which we build our American way of life. And we are desirous in this consideration here of giving uh, consideration to those plans that will bring about a better educational system for our communities and where our various students and pupils shall have an equal educational opportunity. Teacher's hanging right over you here. Let's uh, cut it down just a little, will you, Ray? All right. <laughs> I want everybody to talk tonight. All right. Now, this, this equal educational opportunity uh, carries with it an equal financial responsibility. Today, in this county, we have uh, the 53 school districts. We have millages for general school purposes that range from two mills to 38 mills. In the state of Iowa, we have 4,657 school districts. We have millages that run from no mills for 75 of those school districts to as high as 94 mills for some school districts. There's no equality of financial responsibility. We must, therefore, in thinking of this tonight, think of having this in such a way that we'll have more nearly an approach to financial equality in the various school districts as well as educational equality. Wendell here looks like he'd like to say something, I think. He's a farmer, and uh, I don't know who agrees with what here, but uh, Wendell, let's hear from you. Stand up so everybody can see you. Well, to begin with, they didn't put my town on the map. Well. <laughs> that's this uh, town of Buckeye here that's got its grade uh, school. They had a little foresight. And they put their, uh, their grade school there when they consolidated and decided that they weren't going to try to have a high school because they ha couldn't have enough pupils and couldn't have a good high school. And uh, I really believe they showed sense that maybe some of these other uh, uh, boards aren't showing. And, uh, of course, the problem arises when you've got a great school there. Uh, Buckeye, incidentally, comes south of Alden, and that's uh, Buckeye Township, which is south of Alden. 
We forgot Gifford and places like that, didn't we? I guess you did. Uh, but the, the, the problem is, uh, the, the folks like to keep the youngsters near home, see what I mean? That's right. Uh, the little kids, little tots, they shouldn't be too far away. If they get a stomach ache, they ought to be near so they could call mama. Well, um, and uh, <coughs> that raises the problem of transportation, and I wish somebody would work out a, a problem there. Well, that's, uh, uh, I believe it's good 